Let's just get down to the brass tacks. This is the Osho, so they call it. You talked about peripheral pressers. That's, that's where the pearls come in. You can do the whole cascade if you want. All right. When they do it. Nice. Let's use this particular article just as an example. This is a Cardenas article. Lots of patients got peripheral pressers. They had, you know, a fair number of extravasations. No tissue injury. And they had this protocol of putting on some nitro paste, like putting on the holy ointment, yep. and then injecting fentolamine. Right. First question. Does this actually work? Is there evidence that this works? There's definitive evidence that fentolamine works. But that Ricard paper I told you folks about, the actual randomized controlled trial, they did nothing. They just laughed. They were, they were French. I don't think they cared that much. And uh, th they also Can we well. please strike that comment from the record? <laughs> All French listeners online. Hashtag hate the French. But Montreal <laughs> doesn't count. There you go, buddy. Thank you, dude. Um, so absolutely. I would give it, because it makes you look like you care, so I would give the fentolamine, but I don't know if you need to. Okay, it makes you look like you care. Well, sometimes, I guess that arm's not gonna care about Prescani, but it's gonna be important. Yeah. Now, you have a protocol for doing this. Yeah. Say you have an extravasation, you walk in, that thing is just big and fat, it's extravasated. Yeah. What is the first thing that you do? Well, the first thing is it should never get big and fat, because someone's looking at it every hour, so you should notice it when it's small, and not that why, big. Why but, do you talk about best case scenario? Come yes, on. but all you right, let's say happen. for some reason there was a mass casualty incident and it was going for hours. The first thing is put it somewhere else because they're on vasopressors, they're going to still need the vasopressors. So either put it in an IO, run it through that. Start, if there's another line, put it there. Do whatever you need to stop infusing it through there. Don't pull the catheter. This is the mistake everyone makes is their first inclination is, thank you, is to avoid suspicion, right? Like if you take out the IV, it's not your fault. That just happened randomly. So don't do that. Leave it there and then suck out all of the norepinephrine you possibly can. You know, attach a syringe to it and keep sucking until you can't get any more of it out. Then that catheter is your direct route to where the extravasation is. So don't waste that route. Inject the fentolamine through the catheter itself. I have the mixing instructions for how you make up the fentolamine, the dose, all the stuff you're gonna want, but if I try to say it now, you're gonna get it wrong. Just go to mcrit.org, search for peripheral vasopressors, you'll find that. But use that catheter to give the first round of the fentolamine. And then, circumferentially around the wound, just like you would anesthetizing an abscess, you just inject more and more of that fentolamine until you reach the total dose. So don't pull out the IV. That, I'm gonna tell you, that is my first reflex. That IV, I that know. IV's doing bad things. Okay. Oh, I know. Don't pull the IV. Then suck out the evil humors, and then pull the IV. Then use the IV as your route for the first dose of fentolamine. Push in that dose of fentolamine, and then do your subcutaneous injection around. Exactly. Just like you're injecting an abscess or doing a field block for that. Precisely. Do you use the nitro paste? I don't bother with the nitro paste. I don't see any great studies demonstrating that. There was a shortage of fentolamine, and if I couldn't get it, then I would use the nitro paste. Do we need to dilute the presser compared to what we would put into a central line? Yeah, we don't. We use our standard mix. There's a like super concentrated, I don't want this patient to get a drop of extra fluid, norepi drip in your hospital. That's not the one you want to use. We just use the standard, regular, normal, pre-mixed one. Um, you could dilute it. That might make it even safer. But the, all the studies just use normal mix norepinephrine. So we've got, if there's extravasation, leave the IV in, suck it out, push the good stuff in, do your injection around it, good. You don't need to dilute. Next question, are there certain vasopressors which are okay for peripheral and some that are not? Well, they're all okay for peripheral, uh, we think. Norepi, you know, is the one everyone's super scared of and that's the one we deliberately use. Phenylephrine, definitively safe. You could actually inject that stuff deliberately. And I have no problem with epinephrine or vaso through a, an IV line, so any of them work. If there were, say, if you could, one sentence, how to make a sensical policy in your ED for peripheral pressors. You know, you have to have it protocolized before you do it. What, what is the main important point? 
All right. Our, our policy is we put a limit on it. We said you could do it for six hours. This just forces people to think further on down the road what the patient's going to be getting long term because we have to do that ourselves in our emergency department. So we made six hours, and the nurses checked the arm Q1 hour to see for signs of badness. And that's it. That's essentially the entire policy. You know, that was more than one sentence. I'm sorry. Okay. Q1 hour checks? Q1 hour checks and some hospital set time for how long it's going to happen. Here's the big question. And this is, of course, opinion. You know, you and I work in very different environments. I work in a small shop. You work in a big shop. You know, I got an email the other day, the other day from, I, I, bet, I bet from someone in this room, that said, when you and Weingart talk, you always talk about your departments as shops. Can yep. you stop that? Uh, why? I only say it twice as much now. Yep. Damn straight. I'm sorry. In your um, shop, <laughs> do you think there's still a role for central lines in the ED? I like placing central lines. I really do. Do you have to place them? No. You could, let the, you could defer that to the inpatient. I got no problem with that. I like central lines. I need my residents to learn it. So we place a lot of central lines. Those lines get pulled very quickly to avoid all of the issues of central line infection. So I'd say at our hospital, 72 hours is the basically the median time those lines are left in. Way shorter than you have to worry about central line infections and our complication rate mechanically exceedingly low, so I like them. I think the time that I'm using a central line, it, my last shift on Sunday was I had a patient who was having six different drips go in. I was like, I, I, <laughs> yep. dorsal penile vein. I mean, you can't, where are you gonna put all those IVs? It's hard to say. Well, Scotty, thank you very much for all that, but let's play a little game. Yeah. Let's play a little game called ED or no ED. Uh-oh. Yeah. Now, audience, you get to vote on this, and the question is, the person you're going to see, and you know what, they're all dudes, for whatever they're doing, are they going to wind up in the ED or not in the ED? Let's just, let's just, check, out, let's just check out this guy here. Okay, Scotty. Yeah. I mean, come on. Scott David Weingart. Yeah. Hollywood. Trauma man, ED or no ED? I'm going to go with ED. Okay. The audience will vote afterwards. Let's see what happened. <laughs> oh, oh my God. Oh! Oh! Yeah, that was an ED vote. I'm saying ED. I don't even need to take the vote. There we go.